Well, you made it to another one. This is episode five of Generator. And in this episode, my guest is Shannon Doherty. Shannon is an intimate boudoir editorial style photographer based out of St. Louis, Missouri. And her style is instantly recognizable. I'm sure that you've seen it. If you follow any level of photography in the portrait world, I'm sure you've come across her work. She's an educator. She's a speaker. She's a phenomenal human being, and she has been creating her entire life. I can't wait for you to hear this interview because she really does go in depth with every part of her process, what she does, why she cares about her clients the way she does in the space that she holds for them. So I know you're going to enjoy this as much as I enjoyed interviewing her. So without further delay, let's start the show and get into it with Shannon Doherty. Welcome to Generator, Shannon K. Doherty. How are you, my friend? Hello, how are you? I'm excellent. You know, I have to I have to thank you first and foremost for just even being here in the early days of Generator. I appreciate you. Whatever happens during this hour is going to happen. Just <laughs> roll with it and uh, hopefully we'll make it through unscathed. What do you think? I'm just honored you asked me. Oh, honored now. Yes. Honored, is it? I <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take it. I'll take whatever, whatever I can get. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on. You said you had a shoot today. Yeah. So Sundays are kind of my creative day. I don't take clients during the weekends. Uh, it's kind of funny though, because Saturdays are my one day. I told myself I'm never picking up my camera. I need one day a week to have that like separation, do something else, something creative. So Sunday is when I usually feel inspired from having that day away from my camera. So it's been a minute since I've had a Sunday to be able to create, but I had just some random things in the studio. I really wanted to shoot. I went and bought some tiled flooring because I got really tired of my wood floors. So they're not laid down though. <laughs> I didn't make that mistake and take the backing off of them or anything. Um, and oh, I they're just, just like sticky tiles. Yeah, they're just sticky tiles. So I didn't take the back. I took the backing off a little to see what they were like. So I knew to not take the whole thing off. Um, they're just like the little laminate ones. Um, so I really just wanted to play and I kind of played a little different than what I, I normally do. It's really bold what I photographed today. Um, but I have amazing friends that are local that I can really just call and be like, hey, do you want to do some crazy shit with me. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say bold, right? Because I look at everything you do and just the, the styling of it, the creation of it, right? You've got flowers in different ways and the way that you use furniture and the way you use rugs, just your set design is just absolutely bonkers to me. So when you say bold, I can't wait to see what you create. Was it, was it black and white? Did you shoot color? Uh, a lot of color, actually. So it's off, that's um, off brand for you. Isn't it's it? a little off brand. So I mean, uh, let's be honest, a lot of it's going to go black and white. <laughs> uh, the second set that I shot with her was intentionally going to be for black and white. Um, but the first set is a lot of actually bold reds. So I'm pretty excited to uh, play with that as well. Now, is it a um, maternity shoot, right? Because you do a lot of maternity or I don't no, even want to call it boudoir because it's not boudoir what you do. You do intimate portraits. Intimate right? portraiture is what I usually say. Yeah, it's tough to call myself a, just a boudoir photographer because I think boudoir is such is more of a loaded word than it used to be. I think, you know, it used to be a little bit more like you shoot it this way. It's supposed to be like this. And now there's just so many people out there that are really taking it and like taking it to another level. But it's so much more. So that's kind of what I usually do, even with teaching, too. And we can talk about that more later. But, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be what we know. It could be something else, like how sure. to go beyond. So today was a little bit more not avant-garde. I didn't go as avant-garde as I wanted to today. I kind of just for time's sake with her schedule and my schedule, I really just kind of played bold with 
the, she was in red, my background was red, and my tiles were black and white. Wow. So, so that really old classic feel of the floor, right? That parquet kinda, floor I, look. I love checkered flooring. Uh, my great aunt used to have it. And then I have just wood paneling flooring here and it's fine. Half the time I cover it and edit it out or whatever. But short of doing like AI work or <laughs> something on the floor <laughs> uh, or composite work, I just was like, I'm just gonna go buy it. It's really not expensive. Yeah. And I really wanted to kind of do a shoot where I might talk about the budget too that I had. I definitely spent under hundred dollars to shoot wow. this whole book. So, so this really was a, a more of a personal shoot than it was a client shoot. Oh, right? I, I can't do clients on the weekends <laughs> <laughs> after years in business. That was one of the things I really learned was the boundary of my time. And I mean, it really helps me give to my clients more when I can, I mean, most artists, like we can take the time to create for ourselves and I've done things that like creative shoots or sell portrait shoots and someone's like, oh my gosh, I want that for my shoot. And I might have not had that or made that sale if they bought that image had I not done that. So, and I think honestly, creative shooting for me is almost brain dumping. I have to get some of these wacky ideas or some version of it out. Otherwise, I'm a cranky artist and I just, <laughs> until I create it, I'm just like, <laughs> now is that something like do you uh do you sketch it all out do you write it out or is it just here straight on to film digital film whatever um do you like do you just get in there and start to get in flow and start to shoot or do you write things down like oh, i want to play with this lighting setup and i want to do this kind of backdrop like how does that work for you i am better at making notes now yeah i used to literally let it all live in my brain and luckily I have the most amazing friends and clients that just trust. <laughs> I mean, I build the trust with them, of course, but now I make notes or when I talked to the girl I photographed today, I said, ironically with, it was just a like Twin Peaks day or something. I never really watched that show too much. It was like the first season, but the red uh curtains and then they had that bold flooring now i didn't want to do the zigzag flooring i was like i sent her just a photo from that show and i was like this is kind of the vibe but we're, if you know anything about the show if that's not where we're going <laughs> so and she was into it i was like i literally can't tell you much other than these are kind of the things i'm playing with wardrobe i honestly was going to go a completely different direction until she came and i was like let me just do a test shot with you in this really quick and so the background is red, her dress is red, and she has red gloves on. It is all red, <laughs> uh, not any of the makeup or anything, but yeah, I was like, let's just go for it. And just kind of looking at the back of the camera so far, like we're pretty excited, I think. The, the, on the only reason I, I tease you about the color is I know you've got summer black, you've got autumn black, you've got winter <laughs> black, right? you shoot in black and white. It tends to be a monochrome world for you a little bit i do have a i do have a red dress i can't believe i'm admitting this now i do have a red dress in my closet now and some leopard print but <laughs> um no i think for me as far as like creating my work it's almost i think there should be some cohesion with with people's work right like you know what's theirs um i just always liked black and white softer tones um i love shooting um like we're getting close to spring. So I have a bunch of different floral things I want to photograph. I have all the tool. I've got all of the like big pretties coming up, but I really just wanted to do something that's kind of just a little different. Yeah. It's really easy for me. I don't know if it's because I worship your work, but you know, you're one of the, the few people that instantly recognizable in terms of seeing something cross my feed. Um, your work is phenomenally cohesive over years. I've seen mm -hmm. this, right? And is that something that you intentionally craft? Do you feel like, you know, you you are confined by that? Do you love just shooting what you're shooting? Or, you know, like today going a little bit more bold, is that how you release pressure to produce the same thing all the time? And I'm not saying you produce the same thing all the time, mm -hmm. but you understand what I'm saying. Like you take this hard left sometimes, just to do it? Does it help you define your voice better? 
Um, so where does this, you know, this personal work, how does that drive the client work? Well, I even say today, I knew I wanted to shoot this bold look. And then I did a black and white look really quick, which is definitely my style. <laughs> like when I post it, you'll hundred percent know that it's my black and white boudoir style. Um, and I almost did one of my like lighter, pretty, like still like a lot of contrast, but I think my sign, like I guess signature style really is what it is. Cause I think everybody in some form has some form of that, like artistically, sure. I have almost signature lighting that I almost unintentionally look for if, even if I'm not shooting. So I like, I love studio lighting, but even in natural light, if I'm outside and you're like, here's your camera, here's your model or client, like go photo, like, you know, a line of us, like all photographing the same thing. I'm going to look for certain contrasts in light that you might not look for. You might want that like super hard light and I'm going to try to find some way to filter that. <laughs> um, I just always really loved softer light, but still contrasted. And a lot of that comes from my background as an artist. Um, I was a painter. I did a lot of figure drawing and a lot of times too, I loved having those like heavy shadows and shading and all of that. So, I mean, that 100% has translated to my work and how I like to shoot. But occasionally like my brain just wants to go off and do something else. And I think that that's actually a really good thing. I think that's a really healthy thing to kind of step out of comfort zone. Cause originally today I was going to put her in like a whole black outfit and she's like, no, you should do the bold one. So really it was kind of nice to have that other push in, per, person, excuse me, push that out of me to be like, yeah, you know what? And I was like, let me just light test it. Let me see how it looks with my lighting. Uh, Cause you know how we are like control uh -huh. freaks with that stuff. But I was like, I don't want to photograph this whole thing and then not feel excited about it. But I am excited about it because I took some of the elements that took me out of my comfort zone. And then some of the ones that I really love doing and kind of married them together. It's really nice that you're able to do the styling and the lighting and you can do makeup and you can shoot the photographs clearly. <laughs> How did you pick all of that up? Right. So I know, I think styling is one of these things. And I mean, it's, it's easy for me to sit here and be like, I don't know how to do makeup. Right. <laughs> um, but the styling aspect, you have such a, it's a mix of classical and glam and boudoir and Renaissance and modern, like you really do take elements from everywhere and you define this style. Is there a way, is there a word that you can use? Is there a nursery rhyme that you can relate it to? Is there a food that it would be if it was a food? Like, what would you, <laughs> how would you describe all of that in what you bring into uh, your styling? The Shannon. The Shannon. Yeah, it's a pop <laughs> out. Try, try again. <laughs> um, I don't know. And the thing is too, so I, when I talk to my clients too, you know, I always say it's to them up front. It was like the number one stressor other than reaching out. That's step one. So, you know, I always congrats people on that. Um, it's, it's styling, it's wardrobe. That is like the number one stressor for people. They're like, I have no idea what to do. And I have a lot of colleagues that bring in a stylist for their shoot, but, and I mean, their stylists kill it, but I have, I'm always honest with people. I'm like, I love styling. I love being able to pull wardrobe for people and have them feel incredible in it. And I also like to pull wardrobe and have maybe, maybe there's a little question mark over their head. Like, I don't know how this is going to look. And like, trust me on this one. And I always show people the back of the camera regardless throughout a shoot, because I think that's important to kind of, especially, you know, they can't see what we're doing. Um, but I love showing them like, Hey, here's this. A lot of times too, I'm styling things that maybe don't necessarily like taking a dress and tucking in the top of it or something and using a different top and showing them really see how cool this is. And this is a unique piece for you for this shoot. Like obviously with client wardrobe, things are getting reused and different people and stuff, but sometimes just changing the styling for them. I could have the exact same setup, the exact same lighting. Clearly it's a different person, but changing the styling literally makes it so personal. 
and a little more fun. Yeah. And I kind of give a little credit of that to, I grew up, my grandma was a seamstress. My mom sewed all the time. I don't know if they really like styling as much. <laughs> um, you know, they were, they're definitely, they were, uh, you know, jeans, t-shirts kind of gals and stuff. But um, I like to think of myself as stylish, <laughs> but you know, I love being able to have that extra level of creativity with people. And I think, but I think it is intimidating. I, I hear that from a lot of other photographers. They're like, I have no clue Yeah, I'm how to tell them. people. Like sending out like a guide of like, yes, these are the things that you should bring. Sure. Um, and if people aren't doing that, they should. Um, <laughs> but it can be hard. It can be a little intimidating too. And trust me, I've definitely had people be like, I don't know about that. And I'm like, try it on. Let's see how it looks. I'm going to take a couple shots. I'm going to show you what it looks like. If you're not into it, that's totally fine. We've got so many other options of what we can do. Right. And one question I've gotten about that too, it's like, well, I don't have a client closet yet. I only have, or I have like two things in it. I don't really know what to do. How am I supposed to style people with nothing? And that's why I always like to see what my clients want to bring too. And you can really style it from there or even have like, have them bring a couple extra things. Maybe there's a jacket they wouldn't think that would go over like a gown, like a leather jacket over a ball gown. That's amazing. Like, yeah, looks <laughs> it looks great. So, you know, little things like that kind of think about what maybe doesn't always go together. That would look really neat, but also thinking of these things in the environment of how you're going to shoot it too. You know, that's kind of another element. That's a whole other fashion element, of course, but like, that's how it is in like Vogue and all of those magazines too. Some looks wouldn't make sense in certain things. So really think like if you photograph it and it just maybe feels weird, maybe switch up the lighting, maybe take like a shoulder down or something on the dress and kind of have that little pop or something like even that is styling it different and can totally change the whole look. Yeah. You know, that's something that, that Kat Ford Coates, a friend of ours mentions all the time is take the shot, change one thing. Take the shot, change one thing, see what works, right? And it sounds like you kind of adhere to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what are a couple of things that are staples for you? Like if someone if someone had to do styling like this, I I am admittedly not a great stylist. <laughs> right? I have multi jean jackets several different colors i have multi-leather jackets and just <laughs> well, yeah. See, the same thing now are there staples like do you have a piece of fabric a ball gown a leather jacket a scarf like are there staples that that are part of your client wardrobe that you know you can always reach for and always pull that regardless of the client or kind of what you're doing will provide you some of those shots that you mm -hmm. need that's actually kind of a semi-loaded question to me <laughs> because I try to buy a lot of my stuff is either thrifted. I'm very lucky. I've been gifted a lot of things too, or clients will be like, you clearly love this when we were photographing it. You keep it. And I always love that. Um, staples. Well, I mean, wow, that is a loaded question. <laughs> um, well, one of the pop popular things that I photograph too, when it's a little less completely styled is like, the Calvin Klein look, right? It's yeah. a simple underwear. It's a simple bra. If somebody doesn't want to have just stand there with that, I usually throw a jacket on them. Sure. So I have um, a couple like leather jackets, like um, a couple blazers. Blazers are a really good one too, because blazers also transition to when I do personal branding work. And if somebody doesn't have a blazer that they bring and they think, oh, I really wanted to do like a headshot with a blazer. I forgot one. I've got it in my closet. So I don't know if there's necessarily staples, I would say. I would say build things slowly and also think about you and what your brand is. What speaks to you? Not everybody wants a big ball gown. I actually have a lot of things that are sequins in my closet that almost never get picked anymore. Sure. Like in my early work, maybe. But a lot of times too, when I really thought about it, I was like, the things that I'm photographing that are full-blown sequins or more party dresses, those are more creative shoots I'm using those yeah. for. So it just, it's, it literally takes years and things might change again in a couple of years. I actually went through my closet yesterday too. And I was like, all right, 
I really need to get serious. What do I photograph? What do my clients actually like? And can I just put the other stuff away for now? I did a big clean out. I donated to a shelter too. I just needed to like, be like, okay, this served its purpose. Now other people can have it as well. So I don't know if there's really a staple other than what I enjoy shooting and what my clients come to me for. So when I'm doing my wardrobe consultation with them, we talk about those things, but then I ask them, is there anything like on my website or Instagram that you saw that you're like, Oh my gosh, I know I need to shoot that because, or be photographed in that. Um, because it happens. They're like, Oh, I love that dress. I love that jacket, whatever. And, you know, I tell them, I was like, 95% of that is in my client closet. I will occasionally post something that maybe somebody else brought for their own shoot, but I want them to see that there is variety, but I've over the last couple of years, I've actually simplified a lot. Like just honestly, there's so much you could do with a blazer, like a plain, like Jersey dress and, uh, and like a cotton, like bra and panty set, or even like bra and like jeans. I've been starting to buy jeans for my closet too, because maternity sessions, they were great. Sure. Like have the jeans low, have like a bra top on, yep. like those are beautiful and classic. Yeah. You know, it's, I thought when I started my studio that I needed all the wardrobe, right. I needed yep. all the things. And <laughs> so I was just thrifting dresses and, you know, getting things from people and, you know, friends, I was like, clean out your closet. I'll take anything. And then I'd sort through it and kind of figure out what would work, what I like, what I don't like. And then I'd have other uh, clients come in and I'd have them be like, I don't know styles or trends. Tell me what to get rid of. And they'd be like, uh -huh. you absolutely need to lose this dress and this dress. <laughs> You'll never photograph it. And I never did. Right. Mm -hmm. So do you find that you have to keep up with trends or does that even matter to you? Do you try to stay, um, you know, in a simplified classic style like you do or do you keep an eye towards what is trendy um or do you feel like that would date your work in a weird way how do you how do you look at that i don't think there was ever really a point in my life that i completely followed trends <laughs> to be honest with you yeah. um i do like little elements of trends like obviously like the 90s are popular again so i can really push um especially if my client is younger I can be like, oh, like the 90s Calvin Klein ad look. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know that. Somebody more my age or older, they remember those ads. They remember the Kate Moss. They remember all that stuff. So it is kind of nice that trends happen sometimes because it makes it a little bit more relevant of what I'm talking to them about. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I steer clear of trends as much as possible, not just in my personal life, <laughs> but with how I shoot too. And for a couple of reasons. One, Obviously, if I, one example I use with clients, I'm like, I want you to come in and obviously feel like you, um, I say it's personal branding clients, especially because this is their brand. Um, I'm like, steer clear of anything that's too dated. And my example is sometimes like tie dye or something like a polyester shirt from the seventies or something I'm like, not that that's not cool or we couldn't layer it in some way, but it is a trend. It is something that is more dated. I'm like, I want you to look at this in like five, 10, 20 years. And really the only thing that looks like that's changed is when you did it. Right. Um, that same goes for like styling, lighting, everything. Um, so no, I think that there's some amazing photographers out there that can shoot trends and shoot like more streets. I think trend, I don't know. I always think street style with trends. Mm. Maybe because I can't do it. Like I literally, my brain does not go there. Like there's so many great people that do that. And I'm like, that scares me. Give me my studio and a light. <laughs> um, but there's so many people that do that so well. And they do that so well, like in their commercial work, that they can photograph trends and not make them look dated. I think that the word dated scares me a lot because I want there to be more of a legacy to people's images and their photos and really just have a timeless look. And yeah, I think that sometimes wardrobe can make or break. It's no different than photographing something fashion for a magazine. Like again, the wrong outfit and the wrong setup, it could break that whole editorial. <laughs> so yeah, and that, I was, I was actually going to mention that is like, it depends on the environment that you're in the editorial style that you're going for, right? The whole concept of the shoot 
right? Some of those pieces that are trendy might fit, they might not, but you really have to have a clear vision of what you want the shoot to look like overall for it to be cohesive. Knowing that you have a certain approach towards your clients, and then you also kind of have this certain approach to, towards your personal creative work. Do you measure success the same way? Or let me, let me simplify that question. You had this personal shoot today, this creative shoot today. How do you measure the success of that to you? Right? So it's not a commer necessarily a commercial success because you're not selling the images, mm -hmm. right? What makes a, a shoot like today successful for you in your mind? Well, the artist to me says, I don't hate it. <laughs> right? That's so, <laughs> like that's opening so, it yeah, so and being like, oh man. <laughs> and I don't mean like missing a shot or exposure right, or anything. Right, right. You know, just sometimes if you, especially like speaking from personal experience of going and doing something that's not completely out of my realm, but co like bright colors, I just don't photograph as much. That kind of scares me, but I don't feel that fear after looking a little bit and knowing I knew exactly how I wanted to shoot this too. So having those clear notes in my head about it, even though I didn't say everything out loud, she, the, this girl that works with me today, like she always works with me. She knows she's like, what are we doing today? That's why. <laughs> um, and sometimes I don't know until she gets here, but success for me is really just for personal shoots. It's not hating it later. And again, that's the artist in me speaking. And one thing I've always learned, like when I was in art school, it's like, if you can look back at your work five plus years later, and see growth, that's a great thing. You don't have to hate it. I actually like a lot of my old work, but I see growth. So to me, that's successful. I'm like, okay, I've grown a little bit. I'm actually getting out of comfort zones. I'm moving and like, I probably will really love this for a long time. There's a couple of shoots from a couple of years ago. I'm like, ah, still my favorite. I love that. And success on with like clients is really, I don't view success as like a dollar amount. I never really have. Yes, we're a business, we have to get paid. 100%. Yes. I charge my worth. <laughs> but success to me is having a client come in, have an amazing session, purchase things that are going to make them excited. And then I hear from them again. And then I hear from them again. And then I hear from them again. And then their sister comes to me. And then they come for a maternity session. And having that like repeat relationship with somebody because they loved their images so much that they just wanted more and more and more. I've heard you mention that before as well in some of the, the talks that you've given in your education about having just this really solid client base, people mm -hmm. coming back over and over and over. And do you find that there's anything in particular that you do or is it just your experience, right? And I wanna talk about your branding in a little bit because that mm -hmm. always blows me away. But <laughs> I know that you you put so much emphasis on customer service in the experience. And it's clear mm -hmm. that you give a shit about what you're shooting. And you're not just saying, yeah, bring a t-shirt and jeans and we're going to, you know, crush it. Like you really want to craft it uniquely for each and each client. Is that what drives you in, in some of these things is making it unique, giving a shit? Like, how do you find that you're bringing so many people back all the time and they, you form these tight bonded relationships with them? Clearly the work is beautiful, right? Let's, let's just call it that, but there's gotta be something else. Well, I think it's that. I mean, I give a shit, clearly. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't, you know, it's hard running a business hundred percent and I wouldn't do it if I didn't give a shit. I, I would say it's really, I'm just myself with people. Yeah. And I think Authentic. authentic authenticity, people see that people can see right through it if you're not. And I never want someone to feel like, oh, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> um, and that's one thing too, when I'm doing my consultations with people or they're standing in front of me, I'm like, you might've said you wanted to do A and now you don't want to do A. So that's fine. We have a plan B, right. it's okay. And to me, it's so important, especially with doing work that's a little bit more intimate, boudoir, all of that. I have to be able to listen to people. And if they decide that, they just don't want to do something. How can we pivot it and make it work for them? Like, and I think that that is something I've heard from my clients, like uh, getting reviews and testimonials too. It's like, I just made it easy. And 
every person that steps in front of a camera has some form of nerves, at least for a second. Even models that I know, even my friend today, I think it takes a second to be like, all right, I'm being photographed. And, you know, our clients typically aren't photographed on a regular basis. And I want to make sure I'm kind of holding their hand in a way to be like, hey, it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable in front of the camera. Things are going to feel, maybe something feels kind of funny. So let me show you what it looks like and how amazing that looks. I'm a really good, I will give myself props. I'm a really good hype girl. I'm like, that is so beautiful. That is, you know, and even as I'm shooting too, I'm the same way. And it's not ever not authentic. I literally just say these things because I mean it. I will literally be photographing it and like, wow, this is incredible. This is exactly the shot that we wanted. This is the shot that you said that was like your dream look that you wanted to do. How incredible is this? And I think that that's really what it is too. Like they know that they're going to walk away. I mean, I think a lot of us too have had clients in the past, like I wasn't really sure if I was going to like anything. And then they end up liking pretty, pretty much the whole set. Right. And I, you know, I kind of joke when I'm having these uh, like in-person sales with them and I'm like, I knew you would. <laughs> and just to kind of take that ease. And I'm also a no pressure salesman. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to love their images. They've even seen sneak peeks on the back of the camera as I'm shooting them. Other than that, like, you know, I, I don't pressure people. Like, no. I feel like I want them to be excited and not have this feeling of like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, do I really want to spend that much? Like, let's talk about it. It's okay. You know, and nobody's ever walked away from anything. No, I think we talk about it in a bunch of different ways when it relates to us, when it relates to our clients. A lot of it boils down to fear, right? Fears mm -hmm. of certain things, fear of looking a certain way in a bra and panty set, fear of, you know, appearing the way that you think you look to the world, fear of not delivering to the client what you know you're capable of, right? There's mm -hmm. fear everywhere. But one of the things that I've noticed about you over the years is that it's become apparent that at times you are absolutely fearless. And it sounds like there's a, a level of comfort that you've gotten to, not necessarily fearless where the absence of fear, but you're just so comfortable with the entire process that people can't help but be comfortable around you with that. Is that, is that basically what you found? I mean, do you still get butterflies? Do you still get fear before a shoot? Um, I get more butterflies before educating mm. than anything else because uh, being with my client, like, you know, if it's me, if I have an assistant for the day or the makeup artist is there, that's my comfort zone. I'm in my yeah. studio or we're out wherever shooting, like I'm good. Like, I, you know, I have my wardrobe, I have my things and it's just me and that person. I love having that moment with my client, just the two of us, even if I have assistants and stuff, um, which I typically don't. I usually have a, either a hair and makeup artist here or sometimes they stay, sometimes they go. Right. So sometimes it's just me and the client. And I don't, I don't get nervous before shoots <laughs> only when I'm shooting live, mm. when I have students, <laughs> that is the only time. But even then, sometimes I don't too. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to come in. I'm going to be me. Some people are going to know who I am. Some people aren't. And I want them to know who the authentic person is and not this like, okay, let me point a point B. I just don't really work that well like that i don't know i grew up a punk rock kid i never followed rules <laughs> so yeah so speaking of speaking of education right i know you're teaching at wppi this year and that you teach at workshops and you do all this stuff what's your favorite thing um to do with students is it sh shoot live is it talk about process like what's your favorite thing to do not necessarily what you're hired to do but what's your favorite mm -hmm. thing to do when you're educating I do like shooting live at workshops. I like, I really love workshops too, because they are a little bit more intimate and for the boudoir summit, it's shooting base. So they are a little bit smaller and more intimate. And I think that that's really awesome. Um, I've also shot live in front of 150 people before. And it's kind of funny. Once I take a second, I'm like, take that number out of your head right. and just pay attention to what you're doing. It, it it went so much easier too 
like, <laughs> like how I'm being on this podcast. This is exactly how I am when I'm teaching too. But I do get to the points, obviously. And I think my favorite thing to do is shoot live. And then I also just love styling people, especially in front of other photographers that are uncomfortable with it. Like it's little things to do here and there that will totally change. Like you, you could have somebody walk in and have two outfits and you have to do five looks. How can you change that enough or shoot that? Even if you don't change the look too much, how can you shoot the variety with that? And really walking through those things with students, like that makes me really passionate. Um, talking business is totally fine. Like, you know, there, I feel like there's like, uh, when I did the workshop with cat four coats, mm -hmm. I love that we had a shoot, a creative day, a shooting day. And then we had our business day yeah. and the business day was second. Like everybody had their images. They got to go through them at night, bring them in, show them off and stuff. And then we talked business and it was so awesome to do it that way. And like, I have to give her a lot of credit for that. And I'm glad that I was a part of that. <laughs> I think but, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's super important to do things that way because it maintains focus in the right direction, right? Let's use our creative brain, let's use our business brain. Um, and a lot of times people mix the two up, or at least I know just speaking from experience, I'm not gonna speak for anybody else. I know that when I'm trying to do both at once, it's nearly impossible for me to do it. I get I get frozen and 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 stuck in the mud of trying to think in both directions at once. So being able to separate out the creative day and then a, a business day. Yeah, I think that's a great model. Um because you can really you can leave and you can be like, okay, I did all my creative stuff and got the energy out. I'm really excited for the next day. I can grab my notepad, my pen, sure. and really soak in the end of it. Um, I, yeah, I love the way she set that up and probably every photographer, creative person, you know, is a visual learner. So I think it helps to have that excitement from the visuals that you just created. But it's also, it's also tactile, right? The, the, it means something more to you than if you're using someone else's images, you're using your own stuff and you learn a little bit more about how to market, learn how to sell, learn what you would do differently, yeah. right? And how to make that better. So in that you're crafting the aesthetic, the voice that's yours. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to use that and lead into the aesthetic that you've created, right? And we've talked about the styling and, and how your stuff looks. We've talked about your customer experience, but you in the conversations that we've had where I've asked you, I'm like, how do you, <laughs> how do you package your stuff, right? So my level of packaging, I'd like to say is, is one step above brown paper bag, <laughs> but about 1150 steps below what you do for your clients. And I'm in awe of how beautiful your packaging is for your clients. Now, is that something, again, that comes from just giving a shit? Is it that you want your logo everywhere? Is it that you love the packaging, right? So, so many people use Dropbox or just, mm -hmm. you know, wrap something in tissue paper and toss it in a bag. You pay attention to every single detail. Mm -hmm. Can you like just describe basically your, your packaging, your approach to that, that aesthetic, that part of your business? Well, I will say, I don't think there's anything wrong with Dropbox. <laughs> in a pinch, I've had to use it for clients that are far away, right? Sure, of course. But Dropbox also works for certain things too. If I have a personal branding client, I Dropbox it. They need those images. They need them for their website. They don't need prints. Like that's the easiest way. Oh, hey, like uh, I lost my link. Can you send it to right. me again? Oh, I've got it right here. <laughs> totally fine. Um, but packaging to me, I don't know. I just always felt like there's something about like you go to the store, let's say you go somewhere nice and they put it in the package. You get to go home and you open it. There's something that feels really special. Like, I'll be honest, I'm that girl. If I buy something really expensive for myself, I usually save the packaging and I use it for whatever. Like right now I have dry flowers in like a YSL bag sure. <laughs> because I just think it looks cute <laughs> and it adds a little bit, that little fun little pop of luxury. Sure. But that's what it is for me. I offer a luxury service and I like to hand somebody a package, even if it's digital. Now I know technology changes all the time. So my computer doesn't even have the USB thing anymore, but now a lot of companies have the updated version. So they have like the, 
I don't know anything about technology. Uh, the little it's TV. all DVD. It's DVDs now. It's a uh -huh. DVD burner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's like the little tiny USB thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of companies have finally updated that, um, which is great. Um, but even if I'm just doing digitals, and I, I, you know, I, I just say just digitals, but it's still something. I put it on a flash drive. I put it in its own box. I add my brand color tissue paper, so white, black, and rose gold, into a branded bag, and I hand this to them. And nine times out of 10, I go to my client and bring that to them. Just depends on where they live and our availability. <laughs> Sometimes it is so much easier for them to come to me. But a lot of times if I have maternity clients or it, they've just had the kid or mommy and me sessions, I go to them. Like I make their life so much easier. And it's just that one little extra step of maybe not like hard packaging, but it's still part of the, like the luxury, like I got this delivered to my house, hand delivered. Like that's amazing. I always include a thank you note as well because even if it's, I don't have the best handwriting, but it's a handwritten note, you know, thank you for coming in and choosing me for, you know, to photograph your session, like, especially like maternity sessions, like this amazing part in your life. I can't wait to see your family grow, you know, and it's just that little bit of extra touch. It's so much more to me than like writing an email and just sending a Dropbox. Again, not hating on Dropbox because yeah. I definitely use it too. <laughs> but yeah, it's just always, it just always feels like part of the luxury experience. I'm handing you a package. Um, tomorrow I'm delivering um, a huge print box with 30 plus images and a flash drive. And I've been offering these uh, ice cube prints too um, through the boudoir album. And this thing is heavy. I cannot wait to hand this to my client. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but right. associating the weight to sure. kind of, uh, you know, it makes a difference. I show people when I show people the prints, I'm like, feel these boxes, like see how well made they are. See how like, these are pretty incredible, right? You know, and I just think that that kind of adds something. I think what might be next then is the Shannon K. Doherty branded cart that you wheel things <laughs> in on. I mean, I have a cart over there and it's rose gold. So it fits <laughs> the whole aesthetic. One step ahead of me. One step ahead of me. <laughs> I'll um, just slap a logo on it. <laughs> where do you get your inspiration? I know you love going to art museums, taking photo walks, right? How do you keep that creativity going? Honestly, you kind of just said it. I was like, give me a cup of coffee and leave me in an art museum. And I'm good. Um, I regret when I was in Italy, not spending literally days in art museums. I only spent like half a day in a few of them. But um, to me, sometimes, honestly, I get inspiration from shutting my brain off, just taking a little time away. I am so in love with what I do. I am so in love with creating. I'm so in love with art. Like my obsession is buying coffee table books right now of all my favorite photographers and artists. Um, if I ever move, <laughs> it's going to be a mess um, because it's going to be very heavy. You're going to need a U-Haul truck just for that. But I have this constantly around me. I hang prints. I hang everything. I have my own prints up. Um, sometimes I have to take a step back and I'm like, let me just spend half an afternoon watching something silly like I love like comedies and things, but, or going and taking a walk and listening to a podcast that has nothing to do with photography. And I definitely have had people laugh at me. They're like, I thought you love this. I'm like, yeah, I love it so much that it's like having a child. It's okay to take a, like an afternoon away, I put a pen in that, come back to that. And sometimes after that, I'm like, Ooh, you know, I listened to this podcast about this town or whatever. And then I started looking it up and wow, their gardens are amazing. So now I feel like I want to like do this whole garden shoot or something like that. So sometimes it's the opposite way of finding inspiration than opening a book, going to an art museum. Just giving your brain a rest. Yeah. Um, which is hard for me to do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, no, I think it's hard for a lot of, a lot of creatives to do. And I certainly don't take enough time away and just, give myself a chance to play. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, something that, that Parker Fister has always yelled at me about is just not, not spending enough time, just playing, just experimenting, just going yeah. off and doing stuff and failing. Right. What is 
what's the last thing that gave you that feeling of inspiration? And if you say true crime podcast, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> I actually haven't been listening to that as much. I realized that it was kind of like adding into like winter sad. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I love fashion so much. And I mean, we're, I mean, it's kind of trends in a way, but kind of the opposite of that. Like Alexander McQueen is literally my favorite of all, like, I miss him so much, <laughs> but obviously his uh, studio is still going. Um, but I have a couple new pieces like I bought for my wardrobe. And then I start, I make some stuff from scratch. Right. Like I love, again, I think that's just having my grandma and my mom sewing all the time. I will find something of theirs. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I love how they did this, uh, you know, something with a garment. And I'm like, I kind of feel like I might make a rose out of that. And like, kind of like find, like not copying their work by any means, but you know, how we find inspiration from each other's work too. Sure. Like you might photograph something like bold reds or something. I might feel like, you know what? I need to try that too. And just, I, I just love fashion <laughs> so much. I might wear all black, but when I photograph stuff, like I have a couple ideas of what I want to do. Um, I worked on a corset um, and it's silk and uh, pearls. And I just, I, I don't know why I'm so excited about it. I just want to photograph it on everybody. <laughs> I know that you make your environment very much part of who you are. You've shown me pictures of, you know, your apartment and you've got your bats in your Halloween stuff. And it's like, it, it is keeping your environment in a certain way. Does that just constantly fill that cup of, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. This gives me inspiration. It keeps me going, makes you feel good. Do you, I mean, do you find that your environment's a huge influence on your mood and your behavior and work and play and, and all of that? Well, I, yeah, I think so. I mean, like my home and like my workspace and everything, it's very much styled like me. Yeah. Um, certain parts of the studio aren't, I just keep them pretty bare because it's just easier to set up and take down. But uh, like a burgundy accent wall at home, I make dry flower arrangements. I love like the vases that are like the bus. I love bats. <laughs> um, I have plenty of bat tattoos too. Like I love just having that like half romantic and then a little touch of Halloween. But then just this soft feminine, like if I could live in a castle, that would be great. Like just leave me there. I'll be good. <laughs> Cause I just love that, that, that look, that energy, like, it just feels like it makes me excited. Like for someone who's like more in a, like minimal style, they might be like, I love those grays. I love that simple furniture. I love that stuff. And for me, I'm a little bit more on the opposite where I'm like, yes, give me those deep colors. Like that inspires me. There's a lot of that kind of in my work too, where it's like, it's black and white or it's this and that, but I love these like rosy beiges and like deeper indies and things too. So there's a lot of me that definitely goes into like what I do. Are there many castles in St. Louis? No, but there are these little interesting things and I can't remember the name of them right now. I should, had I known, I would have prepared. Um, <laughs> in the river, uh, they're almost like little lookouts and people used to live in there. Like they're oh, really? not occupied now. They're very interesting. So, I mean, kind of a castle, because, I mean, like, you had to have a boat to get there. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Yeah. So, no, there's no castles here that I know of. But there's some neat houses. <laughs> now, little things that people don't know about Shannon, right? You used to work in an art gallery, right? And do, were you doing the the styling at an art gallery? Were you, is that what you went to school for? I can't recall, but I know there's a periphery attachment to um, I art did, galleries. I didn't work in an art gallery, but I definitely would do some hanging. So uh, hanging that was yeah, awesome. I would hang stuff. I know, super exciting. Um, no, but there's a there's an art to that. There's an art. Um, to that. Yeah, I'm terrible. I really don't measure when I hang stuff, which I'm sure makes people cringe. But I'm usually fairly good at eyeballing it. Right. Um, and I don't really know if I play by the rules of like it has to hang here and like eye level, like whatever. Um, I'm sure, sure many people would love hearing that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I grew up a, an artist my whole life before I even knew what an artist was like uh, coloring, watercolors. Um, 
it, it's sad to say that my grandma never really did a whole lot with it, but she did watercolor paintings on top of like when she was making quilts and sewing and things like that too. And I think that that's just something that always stuck with me, even though I didn't really grow up around her too much. Um, my mom always makes a joke. She's like, I can't even draw a stick figure. And then you're creating this and now you're photographing this. <laughs> like, does it skip a generation uh, kind of thing? But um, yeah, I think I could just live in an art gallery and probably... Just... It, <laughs> it, it sounds like you idolize the women in your life or you hold them in such high regard. I think How... I, I think I just love women in general. I yeah. think that there's just something so beautiful and powerful. I, I like, yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's apparent. It's apparent in the work, right? You you're not just taking beautiful photos. You are really bringing out different sides of some of these women. And to be able to take people, I say people off the street, right? Muggles, non photographers, non creatives. Let's say like just people that come in as clients, and you turn them into true artwork, and without variance, without exception everything that I see you put out falls into that. And it's, it's an incredible skill. I've got to believe that it's carved out a pretty specific niche for you in that world of intimate portraiture. I think a lot of times, you know, we're kind of taught to be like, you know, don't do too much, right? Like, don't be too much. I don't know, should I hang photos of myself on the wall? And I want to give everybody, there's no reason that every woman shouldn't feel like they're on the cover of a magazine or feel like literally. So like when I photograph people, I photograph it in my head, like an editorial, I think close up shot, pull back shot. Um, I feel like I heard another photographer say that recently too. I'm trying to remember who it was, but I, I do. I think how would this, client feel if they saw these printed in a magazine and i mean that's kind of what prints are too but i'm like hang your photos on the wall there's no reason that you shouldn't be excited by this photo shoot don't shy away from it like i understand maybe having an image or two that's very very intimate maybe you don't want to share with people that's fine but i shoot so much variety with people because i'm like it's more than just this or that like you are the artwork right like i want you to feel special they come in, they get hair and makeup done. It's literally full service the whole time. I was like, all you have to do is just be the supermodel for the day. That's it. And it can be kind of tiring. But so by the end of the day, I'm like, okay, go eat, like, you know, go relax. But they don't have to worry about anything. And I think that that's something that just in general was just humans. We have so much to worry about. There's so many things here and there. And then it's like somebody comes in and they're tired and they're nervous. And I'm like, we got this. It's like you literally don't have to do anything other than just trust us <laughs> and we're going to create a beautiful day for you. I love that. That's exactly what happens. I love, I love seeing the output of it, right? Because everything you've talked about so far for the past 54 minutes has been experience, caring, authenticity, right? Empowering, bringing bringing women into this place where they can be themselves and still, you know, be beautiful, no matter what they're going through, where they are in life, what age they are, where they come from, all of that. You treat everyone with such tenderness and care. It's, it's, it's important, I think, for people to hear that just that little bit of extra care, that empathy, that attention goes so far, not only with your clients, but in the work itself, right? We can get complacent and just kind of phone it in sometimes. 100%. Do you ever find yourself phoning it in? In the past, yes. Yeah. Uh, when I first started a long time ago, yeah, it, it felt, so what does, let me tell you what doesn't work for me is having a shoot list. For some people, it helps their brain. Trust me, I get distracted by things, shiny things all the time. But I felt more stagnant and phoning it in when I was like, do this pose, do this pose, do this pose. I have like a general idea of where I'm going to start with people. I always have a, like a couple of the same warm up poses I do. We're going to start with this look. A lot of times I'll start more full glam when their hair and makeup is fresh. And then we'll kind of like strip it down a little bit more. Maybe it becomes more of like the clean black or white Calvin Klein vibe. 
Because mm-hmm. it makes more sense. Why would I start with that too? When I have full hair and makeup, when I, by the end, we want it to fall just a little bit. It'll still be mm-hmm. good, but we just want it a little bit more relaxed. And also too, I just want to give people like options. Let's do like a little glam. Maybe you're not a gown girl, but maybe we do something that was like with a blazer and some, and like one of the fitted dresses right. and kind of work from there. Cause honestly, like even with warm up poses, I still, those are still sellable images to me, but I don't like having like, okay, I'm going to go through, we're shooting five looks. So I'm going to do these five. Okay. Tomorrow's client. I'm going to do these five next day's client. I'm going to do maybe those three and then maybe two more. I think just like everybody, I burn out too. (laughs) Um, I don't know many creative people who haven't had some form of burnout in some way at some point in their career. Um, but Part of that, I, I just can't have a shoot list. I need, I will have like a general idea. I will sometimes even have a semi mood board with somebody if they have very specific thing they want. But other than that, I'm like, let's just, I'm more inspired. If somebody walked in, here's my wardrobe. Like, let's say we didn't use any of mine. That's when I'm inspired. And then that's when I can shoot. Cause if I have something pre-planned too much and then they come in and they, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that throws me off. And then sure. I don't feel like I'm can give them a proper session. So I'm, I'm a very structured, unstructured person. If that no, makes, makes sense. sense. I think you leave room for the muse to play, right? I and yeah. yeah, yeah, that's an important part. And, and I know there are so many folks that look for where's the manual, right? Mm-hmm. What's the poses I need to do? What's the lighting setup I need to do? What's the wardrobe that I need? And it doesn't give them the room to play. And, I'm, you know, we've talked about we've talked about playing a lot, but I think having that breathing room in your own creativity is just such a huge part of the process, right? It's being less structured, less rigid. I'm all, I'm always surprised by the stuff that I create when I let, just let go, just let go of it all and just trust your instincts, trust your gut. Yeah. There's no reason that something a little different or like, I'll even ask my clients, I'm like, Hey, can we try something new? Do you mind? A lot of times those are incredibly sellable images for me because they're excited. One that I asked them like, Hey, can we just try this new thing? Do you mind? I haven't tried it before. Um, but it's different for everybody. Like there's not, it's not a one size fits all thing. Some people work very well. Here's my shoot list. Here are my sellable images. I'm looking to have this sale for this much exactly it works. and it works and it does. I mean, I've definitely been there too, but then I realized I had burnout so much quicker when that's how I was shooting. So just for myself, it just doesn't work that way. I have to be able to, even if we, again, stick with a little bit of a schedule, I'm like, all right, I have to throw something different in because I also want them to have their own experience too, especially clients that are referrals. I don't want to give them the same session I gave somebody else that they were referred by, you know, I don't want them to feel like, wait a minute, (laughs) I have that image too, or maybe I have that image, but I have my own version of it. Right. Like, Oh, I decided to do the gown for that one instead. Let's talk about the obsession with the office just a little bit. Um, I couldn't let you go with it's an obsession. It's a way of life. (laughs) (laughs) Um, any, so that actually adds into the uh, turn the brain off thing. Like it's, it's a nice way to just have it. I can put on the office and I actually read this somewhere too. You could put on the office, close and just have the audio and listen to it like a podcast. hundred percent. I could totally do that. I could quote you the whole thing. It's just one of those like feel good things for me that makes me laugh. It has silly jokes that are now pop culture references, <laughs> right? right. Um, some are not appropriate for certain situations. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I actually went to one of the office exhibits in Chicago too, where you, you, really? really, you kind of walk through, like they redo the set and you can take photos and yeah, I did that. The office experience. So it was called. Oh my God, that's fantastic. <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing an office inspired editorial shoot? Oh, I Put don't know how I do that i really would have to think about that honestly oh my gosh oh yeah. <laughs> you just made my brain explode a little bit that might not work for my brain but now that you said that hopefully somebody else who listens to this they'd be like oh yeah i got that <laughs> now if you were like hey can you make a shoot inspired by like bridgerton i'll be like oh, i already shot that let me show you 
Yeah, that's like every day of my work. Anything that's like beautiful and things like that. Um, I've definitely done theme things in the past, like had clients that love Star Wars and things like that. I just don't know if I'm the right photographer for that now, yeah. but I was in the past. But we can definitely add an element. But I don't know. I don't know if I could do. Let's just keep the office separate, okay? All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Work and play separate. Work and tomorrow. play. Let's Got keep it separate. <laughs> and we're full circle. What's yeah. going on this year? What do you got planned? Um, so WPPI yep. is coming up very quickly. So I'm teaching a shooting bay uh, for the boudoir summit. Um, and it's going to be a new perspective on boudoir is what it's called. And I'm really just going to style my model and do what I do. I really want to talk about how it's so much more than like lingerie and these setups. Like how can we add a little variety to give our clients a little bit more? It doesn't have to be the exact copy of everybody's going to be different. And I think that that's great. Like, let's kind of take us out of this rut and like move forward. Like, how can we, again, the styling thing, the styling thing scares people. So what little things can we do to like really amp up things for our clients? Like our clients are happy. We're making more money, all of that stuff. And uh, hopefully some more travel soon. Yeah, um, where are you hoping, going? I'm hoping Phoenix in September, but there might be a possibility I'm going to Portugal, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> That's all just uh, not quite written in stone yet. Um, taking a little family time to South Carolina this summer. Um, other than that, I'm always down for whatever. So. <laughs> Maine's not that far away. Well, Maine might be a little too cold at the moment. But the moment. Once, once we hit maybe springtime, uh, a, a, a flight, not a drive up that way. <laughs> Well, the studio is yours if you need it. I think, you know, being able to show this area a bit more style would never be a bad <laughs> thing. And I'm certainly not the man to do it. I will uh, definitely, I would, I would actually ship wardrobe there instead of trying to pack that. Uh, right. Literally for any of the traveling I'm doing, I am trying to, it's hard to not pack the gowns, but I try not to. It's too much to travel with. <laughs> Made that mistake too many times. Well, listen, thank you so, so, so much for giving me all this time. I know it's a Sunday night and you know, <laughs> it's not something you necessarily wanted to do after a long day of shooting, but I appreciate you being here. It was an easy favorite. shoot today. This is an easy talk. <laughs> I can't wait to see the, I can't wait to see the images. I really want to see this floor that you put together. I know. Well, the only problem is, as I didn't buy enough panels, so it might be a Photoshop situation. Although I think I rectified it a little bit. So we'll see. <laughs> all right well i'll hold judgment then you're <laughs> uh, gonna be like whoa <laughs> but thank you so much for thank being you. here and uh let's do this again sometime soon maybe okay. out of wppi all right let's do it <laughs> all right thanks shannon i'll talk to you soon you. Bye. bye